This is a model of Fukushima nuclear power plant on Japan's northeast coast. Tuesday's most serious blast hit at 6.10 a.m. at unit number two. Later, officials say spent nuclear fuel in unit four heated up, sparking a fire and possible hydrogen explosion there. It follows Monday's blast in the building housing reactor number three. On Saturday, the first hydrogen explosion tore through the number one reactor. Let's go inside reactor two now to see how this could trigger a meltdown. The uranium fuel rods in the core are kept cool and safe by pushing water through the reactor vessel. To shut off the nuclear reaction, control rods were inserted immediately after the earthquake. But the tsunami damaged the standby water pumping system one hour after the quake. The level of water fell, exposing fuel rods to the air, and the temperature of the core rises. The fuel rods are half exposed, and engineers are trying to inject seawater to cool the core. If the fuel rods are not fully resubmerged and remain exposed, a meltdown occurs due to heat buildup from radioactive decay. The core will start to melt through the reactor vessel, then burns through the steel containment and the concrete floor of the reactor building, which takes less than 24 hours, causing what scientists call a total meltdown. A different threat is emerging in reactor vessel 4, even though it was shut down before the quake for maintenance. Here the problem is occurring in what's called the pond, a 12 metre deep pool of water that cools spent fuel rods. The water level is now dropping several metres, exposing the top section of 20 years worth of spent nuclear fuel rods, whose cladding is heating up and burning, releasing large amounts of radioactive material into the atmosphere.